Alright guys, so today we're going to go ahead and try and make a DIY timing gauge for a two-stroke. I went ahead and picked up a dial indicator, I've got an old spark plug, I've got some JB Weld here. And the idea is that we're going to uh, cut the top of this off, pull the, you know, the ceramic and the electrode out, cut the end off here, and then we're going to JB Weld this full, drill it, put the dial indicator through, and it'll stick out the bottom here so we can tell where we are in relation to the top dead center. So we're going to start by cutting this little retaining ring off of the spark plug. So with the retaining ring removed, we're going to cut the little strap off at the bottom as well. Now we should be able to punch out the electrode and the ceramic center. While we got in the vise, let's clean up those edges of the file. I'm just going to deburr the edge just because I know I'm going to cut myself on it. Now that we've got our nice cleaned up plug housing, we're going to mix up some of this JB Weld. This apparently has a working time of five minutes and then cures in about an hour. So we'll be able to drill this in the same day, which is nice because some of this stuff takes 24 hours to cure. But uh, we'll get this out, get it kneaded, and then pack it in there. All right, so we're getting it all the way to the bottom here. I want to pack it in as much as possible so we don't have any voids. It's getting warm. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. This stuff is getting pretty hot. All right, that's looking nice and packed in there. Now we will let this sit for an hour to harden up and cure. Alright, so the JB Weld is all nice and hardened up in here. And now I gotta drill out a hole. Gotta figure out what size our little machinist dial is. Right at about nine point nine point four millimeters. So I found the three eighths that I have that is pretty close. So for the lower section here, we got about four point five millimeters. I went ahead and I found a three sixteenths that's close enough. I totally neglected to measure this tip, which is actually bigger than the shaft, and I uh, had to bore out the hole a little bit bigger, but it's a nice kind of press-in fit. 
So I like how that is. All right, we're gonna start by threading in the insert because there's not a ton of space in here. So getting the gauge in, we'll, we'll have to fish it through some stuff. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna rotate the flywheel forward until we see top dead center here. There it is. So right there as it starts going back down. And let's set that as zero. Okay. So now that we have our top dead center marked, we need to go back 0 0.035 inches, which is um, the stock timing for the YZ85, which I believe is, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 5, right there. So with the camera on, the stator and uh, rotor, I just want to show you what I was doing. I was rotating uh, counterclockwise to find top dead center. As soon as it started dropping, pull it back to where it was exactly matched at zero. And then when I went to set the timing, we just pulled it back 0 0.035 inches on the caliper until it was set. All right, so looking at the flywheel here and the stator, the timing mark on the flywheel, if you can see it, it's right by that arrow, is actually really close to the timing mark on the rotor, which is, uh, it's really hard to see, let me point it out with the uh, screwdriver. So that is our timing mark right there. And then our other timing mark is on this rotor, which you can't see, unless I shine light on there. There we go. So we want to line those up and then tighten these screws here to set it. It was really, really close. Uh, let me just rotate this a touch. There we go. And we'll tighten these up a bit. And then just for giggles, let's rotate it one more time around and make sure that our timing marks line up again. All right, so we're at top dead center again. Spin it around. One more time. All right, and then back. 0 0.035, 10, 20, 30, and 5. So let's take a look at our timing marks. Yep, they are still perfectly aligned. Goes back right from the rotor, uh, or the rotor, right from the flywheel to this plate. So we'll torque these down just a little bit. No need to go ham on them. Just keep them from moving. All right, yeah, they're plenty tight. And there we go. That is one YZ85 timed. Not too bad. So there we have it. Another awesome tool for the two-stroke toolbox. This was pretty easy to make, just knocking out the electrode and the insulation in here, and then uh, you know filling it up with JB Weld, drilling it out for the the machina style, pretty easy. I didn't have to do anything in the machina style. The steps are actually pretty quick and easy on the YZ85. I hope you guys enjoyed these last two videos. I know they're not as interesting as some of the other things I've been doing, but I did find them super useful for diagnosing a couple issues with the YZ85. 
especially the leak down tester, you know, finding the busted seal. This was pretty, I mean, this wasn't as useful because the timing is pretty much spot on, but you know what, now we know it is. If you can think of any more tools like this that are DIY oriented and something you can just whip up in the garage, please drop them down in the comments below. I love to see them. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage and I'll see you on the next one.